Hello, this is Nick from ReviewOutlaw.com. Today I want to tell you about my trip traveling from Rhode Island to Florida via the ICW, the Intercoastal Waterway. So I took my 35-foot Monterey, it's a 340 SY, 2013 sport yacht um, and I took it down the intercoastal. So we left uh, Cuisset Marina, it was the starting port, and um, split it into many different days. It took us about 12 days total to get down there. Took some rest stops, some days we traveled all day long, eight hours, other days we traveled for about three hours. So it depended on the weather, depended on uh, what the different sites we wanted to see. Uh, New York, Atlantic City. We had a, some destinations we definitely want to stop in at, and some days we just wanted to go really far because the weather was with us. Okay, day one, September 20th, Saturday. Getting ready to leave. Getting all gassed up. Excited? Very excited. Cool. Ready to go. Wind's pretty strong today out of the ocean, 30 miles per hour. There's no rain, which is good. So this is the old um, power adapter. Um, so I rough the trip, it smells them burning before we left, and I actually started a little electrical fire here. As you can see, that's not looking good. It's very hot, so we have to place this outlet, went to West Marine, 130 bucks. Got that. Uh, Replaced. So now we can leave and we don't have to worry about any electrical fires. So the plan was to leave uh, early in the morning, uh, 8 a.m. the first morning, but we had some really heavy wind in the morning, so we figured we'd leave in the afternoon. Then it ran into some power issues and had to quickly run to West Marina to fix that before we could go because we knew once we started the journey we wouldn't have a car. I did get that fixed really quickly, luckily, I had all the parts we needed. Um, and set off and the wind had come down a bit but it still was pretty rough out so we didn't get as far as we wanted to but we were able to make it to Connecticut. So we're, we did leave the state and we stopped in, in Stonington, Connecticut at 6.30. That's day one. So day two, we're up right at bright and early at 7 a.m. Got going about 8 a.m. As you can see this is also a cold windy day uh, a lot of the trip was pretty cold, had our hats on, our jackets on. And once we got pretty far south down to Florida, it really warmed up. But uh, because of the wind this day, we had to do a, a pit stop and stopped in at New Haven, Connecticut. Uh, took the channel in there, took a little bit out of the way, um, but we didn't end up stopping that first day, so we, needed, we wanted to gas up before we hit New York. Uh, that second day was an all day, eight hour uh, on the boat ride. And we were going at uh, different speeds, but most of it was about uh, 17 miles per hour to about 22, um, it, just because we were fighting the waves and the wind. Now each time we would fill up the gas tank, we have two tanks, it's a dual engine, dual 300 horsepower um, Merc cruisers, and we would fill them up to the top, and this way we could get the maximum range. New York was great, um, beautiful cityscapes. Really need to see it, the city by the water. Don't have to worry about traffic. Statue of Liberty was really cool. You could get pretty close to it. Um, no lines to worry about and amazing pictures. So we ended up staying in New Jersey, um, right out, outside the city, uh, New York City borders. Get a much cheaper rate by staying in Jersey City. Um, and we ended up stocking up there for the night. And it's just pretty much like right on the border of New York. All right, so we're on day three, starting at 8 a.m. bright and early. Uh, first final day of uh, nice, nice weather, actually. So flat seas, not very small waves, very low wind. And we had some beautiful views of the city as we leave New York City. Um, so we stopped again, took some pictures of the city and just the different uh, cityscapes um, and the Statue of Liberty. And so today, um, the next stop we wanted to get to was Atlantic City which we planned to be about four hours. Um, so not a full day of driving, but we definitely wanted to stop in at the big cities. This is George Washington Bridge. 
and it's nice to actually go underneath it for a change. Um, on the way out of the harbor, we actually went too close to a battleship, which I thought was just a museum, but it was actually an active battleship. So um, the harbor patrol, uh, the local police, and the Coast Guard came after me with their sirens on. Not very happy at all that it was going so close. Um, but so that's something not to do. We did see some dolphins on the way down the coast and we hugged uh, New Jersey coast pretty close. The closer we were to the, the coast, um, the flatter the water was. So, uh, the key was though just keeping an eye on that GPS, making sure there's no sandbars that stuck out. Um, so we did hit Atlantic City and they got a nice kind of entry port. We stayed at the Golden Nugget. Um, it's a casino, which was cool. One thing that was nice is we used Dakwa to check into a lot of these different uh, places. And I did it the day of, just in case we hit bad weather and I had to kind of reschedule or plan a different route. But the price was very cheap uh, compared to New York City, especially for this location. And because the casino was right there, we could walk right up um, and you know, get some food, you know, check the casino out. I ended up going to uh, Gordon Ramsay's uh, burger, I think it was, and they have some awesome food there. So when you pull into the Atlantic City, there, there's actually a gas station right by the Gold Nugget, and I would not recommend going there. We went there first, but the gas was old. I mean, they hadn't primed the pumps. There was just bird crap all over the um, dock. So I ended up going to a different um, dock, which actually provided cheaper rates anyway. So make sure that when you gas up, um, make sure it's good gas, not sitting there too old, and that if there's bird crap all over the dock, then avoid that one. After every day uh, we could, we would try to wax the boat and clean it and rinse it. Uh, we took an Uber into the Atlantic City itself, the boardwalk. Really cool to walk up and down that. A um, lot of different things to, to, to see. At this time of the season, a lot of it is closed, but uh, which is still amazing views and a lot of fun stuff to do. So day four, we're leaving Atlantic City at 8 a.m. I headed out. Unfortunately, this day, uh, we hit the wind was kicking up, the waves were kicking up, so we didn't get as far as we would have liked. Um, so we actually did stop in for some lunch, um, and that's kind of a good idea to do if the wind is against you and the waves are against you. Sometimes you stop in for an hour somewhere, and hopefully the weather will calm down a bit. Um, so we stopped in at a place called the Lobster House. Uh, it was about 45 nautical miles into the trip. And it was cool because you could pull the boat right up um, on the side of a dock that was free. And you could pull in there, grab some food, and, and then uh, take back off. And it wasn't that far out of um, the trip. It was just in a little inlet, which was protected from the wind and the waves. Um, and then headed back out. And actually after that bit of a break, the wind and things did calm down a bit. So our final destination we ended off at was Ocean City, um, Maryland. Um, this is, I guess, much more popular in the summer times. At this time of year, it's pretty much Deadsville. A lot of the town closes down, so there wasn't much there. As you can see, they have a uh, Ferris wheel and different amusement parks. So in the summertime, fall, I'm sure it's um, pretty exciting, but we are leaving late October, so a lot of the town had closed down. And that's something interesting to kind of look out for if you're going down intercoastal, what time of year are you going, uh, and you know what do you want to do. One neat thing though at the uh, harbor we stopped in at, they actually had a restaurant right on the water, so we were able to grab some food and drinks um, before we closed in for the night. Okay guys, we are on day 5, 7.45 a.m. Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, so this last strip is a, a long run. We wanted to get um, going as soon as we could. We hit, and probably the rough, roughest weather we could have hit um, go on the whole trip, and we had to go through the Chesapeake Bay, and that was where you know, the waves kicked up. Uh, there was a lot of sandbars, so we couldn't stay close to the shore. Had to go before offshore. The wind was kicking up. Um, so that was a difficult traveling day. The other problem was there wasn't many gas stations going down 
And all of a sudden, maybe about two hours into the trip, we looked down and we noticed like we had 20 gallons just kind of gone. Um, and so we either didn't fill it up right the day before or something happened, but it wasn't good because once we kind of started getting going, there wasn't really a gas station for 50 to 60 miles. So if we did run out of gas, <laughs> you'd have to call CTO and that would be a long, long tow. So we did get a little nervous there, uh, kept trucking through it and luckily we made it. Uh, I think we had maybe about 30 gallons left in the tank. Um, so we used quite a lot, but we did make it. That, that was uh, probably one of the rougher days. It took us all day to get there. Um, and the Chesapeake Bay, kind of through the bridge, you get to go over a uh, actual tunnel. And that brings us to the beginning of the ICW, um, which is R36 buoy that marks official start of the ICW in a coastal waterway. And we knew once we hit that, we'd have much smoother waters. Um, this is Norfolk, Virginia. So here we have Norfolk, Virginia. We have um, a lot of different battleships and things like that being repaired. Huge um, military presence here, uh, which is neat. Uh, we stayed at the waterside, which is cool because it's right in town, good prices. Um, my grandparents actually live in Norfolk, so we gave them a call and had them come out with us for some dinner, which was nice. Always good to have family and meet up with friends or family when you're going down. Um, and so when we picked out these different spots, we used Dakwa, and I wanted something with water, one, something with power. We had a splitter, but we have two 30 amp splitters um, that can also go into a 50 amp. So we have um, electricity for coffee, um, water pumps, all that stuff, television. And it's nice if there's restaurants around that you can just kind of go up, get some food, um, so you don't have to worry about that. But every day, generally, we just have breakfast in the morning on the boat and then take off. Uh, dinner, if we can, at night, we like to have some dinner. So day six, going down the intercoastal, Norfolk, Virginia is our starting point. Um, at this point, it's a little bit different of a journey as it's a much smoother ride, um, a little bit more technical as far as it's a, a tighter area, tighter canal. There's more ships going back and forth. And when you pass ships and things of that nature, it's different. Also saw a lot of these Navy ships. Um, I want to stay away from them as didn't want to run into another issue like I did in New York. Um, but it, for the most part, you know, they're docked up so you don't have to worry too much. I did see a cruise ship and they have police patrol. So when you get too close to them, they kind of come after you. So you give them a wide berth and you, whenever you see a police patrol or a cruise ship, something like that. But as you go through these bridges, uh, you'd have to really look because um, this is a tall bridge, so I didn't have to call ahead or anything, but um, there was a barge coming up the other side, and because of the angle of this bridge, you know, you, you can almost run into them because the barges are pushing a lot of weight very fast, so they can't turn or stop or really do anything on a dime, so they definitely have the right of way. Um, so as you go through these bridges, you kind of want to be careful. Um, also, the speed thing was different. I was used to going, you know, 20 to 30 miles per hour on the on the open ocean. In these um, intercoastal way, you have to go no wake for some of it and uh, look out for those signs. So here we're entering the Great Lock. This was really neat. This is actually our first lock we'd ever been in. Um, and what a lock is is you go inside of it and it fills or lowers with with water. Um, and the whole purpose of it is that way you wouldn't have, wouldn't have a rush or flowing of water depending on the tides. Because um, if they didn't have this, you'd really be fighting against that current. It would be super strong. So in this case, uh, the water that we were coming into was high. So we get tie up and um, they do make you wear a life jacket if you go on land. If you stay on your boat, you don't have to wear a life jacket, which is, seems odd. Um, but basically, you, you get a bunch of boats in there, you radio them on 16. Um, letting you know, hey, I'm, I'm planning I'm going southward bound, and this is my boat name, and I say, okay, come up to this point. You come up, as you can see, we're not tied in, we're very loose, and it probably took um, 15 minutes or something be between getting in there and then them going and lowering it. And as soon as they lower it, it says, as soon as you see it halfway open, you can start going out. And right after this, there's a bridge, and they time it on the hour, so you want to basically get out of this guy and hit that bridge because depending on the state, some of them bridges open on demand, which you'd call 
you know, the, the bridge uh, and say, hey, can you please open it? Other ones, it's every half an hour. Other ones, every hour. So if, if you have to wait an hour sometimes to open the bridge, you're just kind of sitting there. Um, so we wanted to get some distance. So we luckily just made it to that bridge right as they were opening, which was great. Um, there's a couple of boats behind us, sailboats and things like that. And you, you know what, what basically got past that point. Um, there was a good amount of bridges. There were swing bridges, draw bridges, all those different things as we went down the river. Some of them we could scoot right under. The height was fine. Um, basically, I'd call ahead and I'd say, you know, uh, you know, bridge. When, when's your next opening? We're heading southward bound, or and and they'd kind of let us know. As you can see from the video, it is very, very, very tight. Now, our boat draws about three and a half to four feet, depending on the pitch and, and plane uh, of the boat. Um, it, it was very deep, like we were looking about 13 to 15 feet for most of it, but there were parts that got very shallow. Um, one thing we had to be aware of, which is very odd coming from the ocean, is they said, look for logs. And we're like, well, you know, what are you talking about? They said, you might see a little stick kind of coming up out of the water, but that might be attached to a larger tree or a log. And you definitely don't want to run over that because if you do, obviously your prop's going to get damaged and you need to call CETO. This is actually, we saw a couple of boats getting towed on the way down um, and they probably just got engine damage from hitting something. So, North Landing Swing Bridge, this is the ski going southbound. When is your next bridge opening? North Landing. When is your next bridge opening? Down there to bridge, it'll be 1300. Thank you. Thank you. So it's funny, you know, most people are used to talking on a cell phone, so it's it's different going back to a walkie-talkie and actually remembering as you're holding that button in, you have to kind of say those right words and say, you know, name the bridge, uh, what kind of boat we are. You also should say where you're located, so it should be, you know, North Landing, Swing Bridge. Uh, where the boat is escaped, we're headed southbound, and our port is Warwick, Rhode Island. So those were kind of all the terms that you want to say, so that they know that you know you're the one going through. Uh, also, once you pass, you can say "escape clear." Thank you for the opening. Um, just saying, hey, thank you. So as we were looking into different uh, marinas to stop on the way down, uh, saw some different um, things that some of them had. Some of them have pools. Some of them have, you know, laundry that's included for free. Some of them give you rental cars uh, included. Um, this particular one gave us a go kart, which I thought was really cool. Um, that way you could take it into town. And different towns. Uh, this is North Carolina down here. You can actually drive around the town in a golf cart. Um, which is great because, you know, who wants to drive in a car? And it was warm enough that that was no problem at all. So Bell Haven had some great restaurant actually that we stopped in that night, really close to the marina. Um, great food, great prices. As I notice, I go more and more south. We get friendlier and friendlier people, uh, especially the restaurants and things like that. Great food. Um, so this was a really fun stop in um, to, to get some food and then we were ready to go that next morning. This is Paul making us breakfast in the morning. It's about 6.30. Still dark out. Getting ready to go before the storm. Let's see, it's still dark out. Sunrise coming up here. Just getting the boat set up. We'll be putting the back tarp on today because of the rain. So we looked at the weather. We knew the weather was not going to be good that day, and the sky was telling us that. The sailor thing is red sky in the morning, sailor take warning. And that was absolutely true today. Um, it was going to be a windy, rainy day and the sky told us everything we needed to know about that. We are leaving River Forest Marina. I'm gonna try to make at least a couple of hours, but the skies over here look pretty dusty. It's supposed to be raining 
They said bad, bad wins, but not Well, we went from our gorgeous sunshine, <laughs> sunrise to it's raining, but we're still gonna keep going. Banks, the windows, got our navigation, we'll navigate with this. And this is what we do when it's cold or it rains. We can close up the whole back. So look here, if you look at this GPS, it actually says that we're on the ground right now. And you look, we're pretty much uh, right in the middle of the channel. And I have a second GPS, my phone, is showing me here that we're right in the middle. So go underneath this bridge. And so it's got a, a red line here on the app say watch bridge clear in case you have a sailboat but uh, always want to have two gps's just in case one gets a bit off and you want to go slow here um, when there's any boats in the marinas usually no wake sometimes you don't see a sign but you want to just be uh be aware of that so as we're going down the intercoastal we would see a lot of different boats and ships um, washed up either really on shore or just kind of stuck in the sandbar uh, which is surprising you don't really see that um, in New England very much uh, and so I asked a couple of locals you know what would the deal with that was so it was Hurricane Florence that had done uh, the damage that had happened in September uh, we were coming up about two months and a lot of the gas stations were closed uh, luckily there were some that were open but if you're heading down intercoastal something you want to be aware of if there's a hurricane or storm that causes a huge um, storm surge you know a lot of the towns can be uh, damaged or close up due to that that hurricane damage we've gone about two months later so uh, most of everything was uh, back up and running but you could still see the damage of the boats and things like that um, it's kind of funny to see these different things down the river as you go down the different barges and things like that. It's just not something you normally see uh, out in the open ocean, but because they don't get a lot of waves in the intercoastal, um, you, you have that. So um, we docked up really early um, at Moorhead City in North Carolina. We only did about three hours this day. Um, just because we wanted to get in before the really heavy rain hit, the heavy wind. Um, and so we just took, took the, you know, some lunch and just walked around the town and just took, took a day to relax. But even this spot right here, that wind that night, it was so rough that it was like so throwing me up out of the bed. Uh, just the way the wind was hitting that sideways way. And we really tied the boat down tight. As, as you can see, this wind just starting to pick up. But that night was a, a rough night. Did, did not get a lot of sleep that night. So because of the wind and the rain, we actually just ended up staying on the boat, having some dinner on the boat. Um, one thing to be aware of, one of the days we had too many appliances plugged in, the toaster oven, the coffee machine, everything going at once, and we actually did short circuit um, the whole uh, marina, <laughs> uh, kind of lost power. It was one of the smaller marinas, but um, too many appliances running at the same time, not such a good idea. Um, the boat was fine, but the marina, uh, we could not get the power figured back uh, on. traveling down the coastal today it almost felt like the Serengeti I mean it just got so kind of natural no more houses and it just was this really really cool landscape um, you just couldn't see any humans for miles and miles and miles felt very isolated in fact I mean you just didn't see any boats uh, either coming by but it's just the landscape was absolutely beautiful um, and you know between North Carolina and South Carolina you had these long 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 stretches of, of um, this open landscape and it was really neat to see you could also go nice and fast at these points so we were going you know probably 34 miles per hour nice cruising speed for this particular boat um, getting making really good time um, and then you'd hit these city areas as well come in patches and depending we're going late in the season so a lot of the boats are up out of the water so we could go fast for most of that whenever we hit a harbor or marina especially a bridge we would slow down for that um, especially So when it came to passing boats, we had a little bit of a learning curve. Coming from Rhode Island, it was very open, and you just pass boats when you feel like passing them, it's no big deal. 
but in the intercoastal it's done a bit different so you get on your radio on channel 16 and when you want to pass a boat um, if you can get the name of the boat you, you know you say hello this is escape uh, looking to pass if you didn't know the name of the boat you'd say you know the sailboat in front of me or the powerboat in front of me um, if you didn't name the boat you name the boat in the port depending on how big the letters are you can as you can see, something like this. Sometimes you can't pass for a long time uh, just because of how narrow the channel is. So you look at your GPS, like, man, if I pass him right now, I'm probably going to end up um, in a sandbar or something like that. So you want to time it right. Um, a lot of times, if you go over the radio, they'll hear you. They'll absolutely, I'll slow down for you. They slow down. You pass at a nice speed um, where you're not knocking them over or something like that. And then you can accelerate once you're past them. It took us a little while to figure that whole policy out. It's of an unwritten rule so at the beginning we didn't realize that that whole game was playing on we didn't have a radio on to ch channel 16 so we were a bit confused by the whole thing so now when gassing up uh, something we'd always double check and ask two or three times to make sure this is unleaded gas not diesel just depending on the size of your boat sometimes they just hand you the wrong uh, nodule you definitely don't, don't want to put the wrong gas in there um, I'd also, also ask uh, if you guys have any discounts. Uh, we're members of CETO, we're members of Boat USA, so sometimes they give you 10% off or something like that for that. So always something you want to ask. If you don't ask, they're not going to give you the discount. Um, a lot of them said no, but I think two or three of them did give us a discount for that. What was great about this marina is they had a restaurant really close. So we were able to walk right over, get some dinner that night, get some live music. Just ended up being a really great night. Um, South Carolina, just the first time we hit South Carolina, which was great. Uh, North Carolina was a long, long journey. All right, so it's the morning. We're gonna get ready for this trip. So we set up our Raymarine. I just use this not to navigate, to see where we are, look at the channel. I use actually my phone to navigate, and I use USA app Navtronics. Put in my current position. This one just has uh, more updated uh, places. It has its limitations. So today I'm going to be trying to go down to Charleston, Charlestown, yeah, Charlestown, South Carolina. Um, it has an issue going too far distances. It's about 108 nautical miles. So I have my current position, and I'm going to just plot a course about halfway there. Should highlight my finger, plot a course, and then once I get this point, I'll plot the rest of the course. So this particular marina was right before a swing bridge. Uh, we timed it just right. There's a couple boats ready to go, to go out. We requested a sailboat says, you know, we're a power boat. Do you mind if we cut in front of you? That way we won't have to do it later. And they said, yeah, sure, no problem. So we did that. I and mean, as soon as you see that bridge swinging open, you can kind of accelerate towards that and, and go right underneath that. But what's interesting is North Carolina, they have their bridges set up on a schedule. So it's like every 30 minutes, every hour. South Carolina, um, they don't do that. They do something different. You have to request the bridge being open. So you just, once you're in front of the bridge, you say, I'm heading southbound, I'm requesting a bridge opening. They say, sure, no problem. And then they open it. I think that actually works better um, for the boats and probably for the cars as well. Um, then some bridges like this, they are just left open. They could just be railroad bridges. Um, so they're always going to stay open and they're going to just lower uh, if the train comes or something like that. If the train coming, you know, you just have to wait for the train. There's nothing you can do about that. So we didn't realize this while we were out on the open ocean, but um, going down the coastal, we started noticing an issue with the, the glass, the, the window. Um, actually, the left window started getting a crack. And what was happening is the window actually started dropping down uh, from the frame. So when we pulled into harbor that night, um, we had to kind of look around for um, some rubber gasket so we can lift that window up. And we actually spent two or three hours pulling the window frame out, putting it back in, and then of course it, that was even worse. And we had to do it three or four times to get it just right in the frame. It was one of those things is when you're traveling, you, know, you don't have the tools, you just can't plan for that. Um, these different things, I promise you're going to occur. And you're kind of scavenging there, maybe take an Uber to, to a local hardware store. Actually, it was, it was just happenstance that we were able to see a glass guy um, close to where we were, and we asked him, do you have any spare parts? And he kind of helped us out with that. Okay, here we just pulled up to Georgetown. It's a public dock free. 
um, tied up. And we get uh, some transient here and get some lunch. So actually today we ran into a boat that uh, ran into distress. I guess they ran out of gas or maybe in a problem with their engine. Waved us down. They said, do you mind giving us a tow back to the local uh, ramp? And we're like, sure, no problem. Um, so we, it was maybe about 20, 30 minute uh, drive, but it's just always good to help any people that you know get distressed or need help uh, on the river. You might be there one day where something happens to your boat and you need some help. So whenever you can help someone out, pay it forward. Here we're entering uh, Charlestown, South Carolina, a uh, huge, huge, huge marina. Um, we ended up gassing up here and pulling into a spot. Uh, funny enough, this has happened a couple of times. They give us the spot number, we pull in, and then they're like, oh, another boat comes up, say, hey, this is my spot. Like, well, this is the spot they gave us. Go back to the front desk. Oh, sorry, give you the, you know, and then we have to end up having to move. So that, that happened a couple of times in our uh, adventures down the different marinas. What I liked about this particular marina is they had uh, pools, they had a hot tub, again, a couple nice restaurants, really close walking distance, and that had great views of this. Uh, this is a museum battleship right here that we're looking at. Uh, really neat views of the bridge and, and the whole uh, cityscape. Um, and they also, at that night, we ended up spending a little bit of time in the hot tub, just relaxing our backs and things like that. Also had some bikes that you could rent, and we went to the local town for that. We are now leaving Charleston. Later today, it's 12:30. Sun's already up. Even the aircraft carrier over there. So another issue we had uh, going down uh, intercoastal on the boat itself was um, some engine um, kind of like oil lube. We were getting low on gear. Um, uh, lube fluid, and so we would constantly check, and it ended up going down down below in the engine compartment. We had to uh, clean it up with some rags and stuff like that. We had a small leak, and um, every day, kind of a couple hours a day, we would check, make sure, you know, do we need more lube and things like that. Once we got to one of the harbors, we figured out it was just the cap actually had become loose. So we took the cap off and then back on. It was just slightly unthreaded, um, probably the mechanic working on it. It says that too, but we got 43 feet and we're on the right side of uh, the marker, which is red right return, so we're on the right side there. But uh, plenty of depth, but a map shows that we're aground. So we just pulled up to Buford. Um, South Carolina, got some public dockage here, this is free. Stay as long as we want all day, just can't stay overnight. We're going down the intercoast, so you see some different neat boats as a power catamaran. And you kind of think like, hmm, if I were to do this trip again, what kind of boat would I prefer it being on? Um, although this is a great boat, something with a little bit more living space would definitely be uh, fun. So now we're going to be entering uh, Hilton Head, and we've actually visited Hilton Head. This is the lighthouse, uh, the main entrance to the harbor. We've visited before uh, just by plane. I have a, had a timeshare for a week and spent the week here. So I saw it by bike. Amazing city to see by bike, but we're often trying to visit uh, the harbors and anything by the water. This is a couple, a couple of nice restaurants and, and town up here, but we often try to visit it by water. So this is a very different experience actually arriving by water. Just the views you get are, are really, really neat. Um, and you know, you're right kind of where all the action is in the middle of the city center. Uh, so it was really fun to come back. This is maybe two, three years ago we came here by, um, by air actually, and this time was by sea.
So I actually have another video on my YouTube channel that's called Five Fun Things to Do in Hilton Head, South Carolina. So I definitely recommend you check that out if you're going to be visiting this city. Um, again, amazing city. I really like the bike rides and just the water views and things like that that you get um, in the city. And I like the Spanish moss. I think that's really cool as well. That's something we don't have up north. So we're on day 11, almost there. Uh, as we're getting more south now, though, it's finally getting warmer. Um, we don't have to wear as many jackets. As the day gets uh, hotter, you know, you just kind of sh shred those different coats and get a t-shirt on, things like that. Um, we took turns driving, so we were three people. Um, and, you know, maybe for a couple hours, two, three hours, I would drive, then somebody else would drive, somebody else would drive, and you just kind of rotate in. Made it a lot nicer um, to do it that way. Uh, because it is a long, like some days we're going eight hours for the entire day to get some distance. Um, other days we'd only go about three, four hours. It depended on the weather, it depended on the destination. So we had a couple cities in mind that we really wanted to check out. noticed on the GPS is at certain points where you have two different mouths connecting like kind of a Y connection you really had to be careful that is when the sandbars hit so you'd go you know maybe 15 feet 50 feet all the way down to like six feet in a matter of seconds if we we're going 30 miles per hour so we really had to keep a close eye um, on that depth and usually a second person would have to kind of look at that and, and with you and so you keep an eye ahead the second person looks at the GPS in, or depth gauge and make sure that it doesn't drop too quickly. If it did, we'd slow the boat really down quickly. So Brunswick, Georgia, this was a really cool place. They actually gave you a free beer at the marina, which I've never heard about before. Um, they had uh, laundry, uh, they had bikes and things like that. Uh, the, all of the bikes were pretty beat up. We ended up just walking into town for some dinner. But a lot, a lot of places, uh, boats here, and I think uh, this is where a lot of people keep it for the winter time. The prices for gas were really cheap. The, the kind of monthly prices to keep your boat here was really good. Um, and you're just north enough where you're kind of away from most of the hurricanes, um, where most of them hit, but you're south enough where it's still staying warm for most of the year. Uh, the water was super, super flat this day, kind of leaving, which was awesome. You just get some nice speed. Um, and it's just a really nice smooth ride. That's one of my favorite things is when the water is just super, super flat. So this is John Paul. This is actually from the uh, TV show Whale Wars. Um, it's about uh, people that go after whale hunters. So I think they were just gassing up in port that day. It was kind of neat seeing that boat. Um, but this is the last day of, of the trip, day 12. Um, Things that kind of uh, I learned, or if I were to do this trip all over again, I probably would have gone a little bit earlier in the season, just so it was a little bit warmer. Um, also, the first three days was really bad windy days, so I probably would have timed it so those first three days were smoother, because if it's a windier day in the intercoastal, it's not that as big of a deal. But overall, a lot of people said that, you know, just this trip couldn't be done, that was too new of a boater with this boat, or maybe the boat wasn't big enough. So don't let anyone kind of tell you what to do as far as um, what you can do with your own boat and your own knowledge. Just go and do it and, and have fun and be safe. So we're keeping this boat up the St. John's River. Um, looking at the map, I didn't realize how long the drive would actually be. You have to slow down because they have a manatee. Uh, kind of safety area so you can the max you can go is 25 miles per hour um, but it's quite up up this river here uh, out of the way of the intercoastal definitely not near the beach or anything like that um, so looking at the map it looks really close but when you actually drive it in the boat quite a distance all right so we've officially arrived in jacksonville we're at the landing they call it for some free parking um i think it's some restaurants I do like how in Florida there's all these different spots you can pull up, get some food, and especially you don't know, pay for the dockage per hour. Like in Newport, Rhode Island, you can pay basically like $20, $30 per hour 
just to dock up and then you want to get some food and you're going to pay for food as well. So in Florida, I think they make it uh, much more border friendly for that. Um, obviously, there are more space in the water as well, but still it gets the tourists down there and uh, just kind of a fun thing to do. So we kept our boat at Lamb Center Marina. One neat thing about this marina is it's a covered marina, so it's concrete covered. Um, not too many marinas have that covered, and that's going to help with the dew, so if you get that hot temperature or the low temperature night, the concrete's going to keep that temperature more even. Also the blistering sun, you can get those hot, hot, hot days, and it can just like melt your face off. Um, so that's going to basically help protect you from that. Um, and just the rain as well. So we have one day which is really raining out and having that cover, just, it's nice you're outside, but it's, it's raining, so. So the plan is we're gonna leave this boat down here at this marina for probably about a month. We gotta go back, um, do some work and things like that, and we'll come back and visit this. And then I like to take it some uh, different places, down to the Keys, um, out to the Bahamas, and I like to do some videos about that as well. So definitely stay tuned for those videos uh, to come and you can kind of get an idea of what it would take to get your boat out there as far as costs and some different places to check out. Um, but we finally arrived 1,251 nautica miles, totally 3 p.m. Okay, so here are the totals for the trip. We took us 12 days Nautical miles, 1,251. Engine hours, 69. Gallons of gas, 1,318. Cost of gas, 5,033. Average speed, 18 miles per hour. And top speed, 44 miles per hour. Hope you guys liked the video. It's a quick video of me kite surfing in Jacksonville. And stay tuned for more videos. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave in the comments. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you have time, please subscribe to my channel, click here to watch more videos, or please give me a thumbs up. Thanks.